Good morning, welcome back to Growing Up Normal with the ability to enjoy things without getting overly obsessed. We're doing just fine. Who is we? I'm assuming the majority of you here are normal upstanding citizens that contribute a lot of good to society by paying taxes and learning how to be a better person each and every single day. But if you're like me and you were raised by K-pop, hi, nice to meet you, this is a support group and we might be entitled to financial compensation. It's all I listened to during my formative years of 0 to 40. I'm not even sure when those years are supposed to end because I'm still formulating why I'm financially supporting random Korean people who I don't even understand. 95% of the time. It's been fun though, spending years consuming Korean music, dramas, and entertainment for most of my life. And what do I have to show for it? Well, it is another source of serotonin I can draw from. My sense of fashion got better, naming every member in a 10 plus person group comes naturally to me now, and my Korean vocabulary skills have improved to the level of everything ends with yo or u or mi da. So that's like period. The K-pop industry is spread far and wide. You're either someone that's heard of it, or you are actively learning girl group choreography on TikTok right now. Uh, yes, I can see you. The Korean wave took over the world by storm, just like that little tingle we had in the back of our throats in March 2020. It's just a cold. I'm sure we'll all be fine in less than a month. K-pop idols have become so well known that they've caught the attention of people that don't even live in Asia, Western celebrities, and record labels wanting to sign and work with them. And why is that? Other than being Korean, the process of becoming a famous celebrity must be the same as your Beyonce's and Justin Bieber's, right? Well, there's a reason why these K-pop groups are so successful and seem too perfect to be true. How can this many people dance in sync 99% of the time, sing like they have four pairs of lungs, and look so beautiful at the ages of 16? You think they walk straight? out of a magazine. New groups are popping up every other week, like they're being mass produced in a factory. For this video, I took off my fake face, put on some glasses, and jumped straight into the rabbit hole. I looked through all the files in my brain related to K-pop and dug deeper into what seems to be a K-pop idol assembly line. So what's the first step in an assembly line? Hey, so there's like a lot of concerningly young people in here. Is this okay? Shut up, it's fine. First, you have to find the talent. Unlike traditional celebrities here that get scouted, audition, or have connections in the industry, Western artists get signed to a record label and they're pumping out music in a relatively short amount of time compared to K-pop idols. With idols, you have to start them young as trainees. Aspiring kids and teens are enrolled into these training programs that teaches you the basics of dancing, singing, rapping, how to behave in front of the media, the hours are brutal, and you're expected to still go to school on top of your training. You're basically waking up at the crack of dawn to learn for 8 hours, then work a 9 to 5 without getting paid, take a 4 hour nap, and do it all over again. I'm sure we've all had that moment of wanting to be famous. Who wouldn't want to live a life of fame? Pursuing your passions of singing and dancing, influencing millions of people all over the world, getting to work with luxury brands, getting your own fried chicken commercial? Mm. Well, the possibilities are endless. That's why you see K-pop entertainment companies holding nationwide auditions to find talent from all over the world instead of just Korea since there's so much interest in this field now. And the talent is getting younger and younger every generation. A group named New Jeans that just debuted this year has a member that's only 14 years old. I was surprised because the way they styled her makes her look so much older than her actual age. This means she entered the industry when she was even younger to train. The mom gave birth, threw her kid in a K-pop training camp, and then went to Bali for vacation. Wait, what? You can do that? Ugh. At first, the training process doesn't seem that bad. You get a place to stay, your food and training is all paid for, and you're developing new skills that you're passionate about. Pretty sweet, right? Well, imagine taking out student loans at eight years old. If you don't do well in the industry, you're expected to pay back your tab after your training. These companies are investing time and money into people so they can mold them into something profitable. You make no money, then expect to have your furniture gone and broken legs by tomorrow afternoon. I'm just kidding, it's probably not that bad. Probably. So after everyone finishes their training, you have this giant pool of young hopefuls. Everyone gets to debut in their very own K-pop group, right? Well, with assembly lines. You know how you only keep the best quality products? It kind of works the same way. Only some trainees get to debut, and if the company decides you're not ready yet, you'll be stuck training until they find a spot for you. Which could be anywhere between a few months and a casual, 
10 years, some people have spent a decade of their lives just on training, like Jihyo from TWICE, who's now in one of Korea's most popular girl groups. Yes, she ate, but she started training when she was eight. That's basically giving up your entire childhood just for a chance to make it in the industry. And if the company decides you're not good enough and cuts you out, you're leaving the K-pop training program with poorly developed life skills, trauma, and a lot of bitterness. Like with this situation, the most popular and richest K-pop group, BTS, could have had an extra extra member named Kim Jihyun until their company decided he wouldn't get to debut with them. Imagine being so close to living this lifestyle just to be cut from the group at the very end. Success isn't always guaranteed. When you're young and your company makes a lot of promises that sound too good to be true, of course you'll be in the mindset that if you work hard, it'll pay off in the end, which isn't usually how it works in the entertainment industry, especially one as competitive as K-pop, where trainees can be replaced at any time. There's an unlimited supply of talented and hopeful kids that want to be famous. Being cut from the team can be something as little as your looks don't fit the group image, your eyes are a little too far apart, your nostrils are too big, maybe the CEO of the company doesn't like Scorpios. Sometimes your skills don't matter and it all comes down to luck. He was just at the wrong place at the wrong time. It's nice to hear that he's not super jealous of their fame, and he mostly misses them as friends. But still, that's got a sting, knowing that you could have been part of the biggest K-pop boy group out there. It's like finding you won the lottery, and then your dog ate the lottery ticket. The days spent training are long and exhausting. These companies do this to weed out the people who might not be able to handle this lifestyle. Not to mention the toll it takes on your health. And when you're in such a big group, if one person gets sick, it messes up the entire schedule. You ever have that one zero-patient sick person in your household that <laughs> infects everyone and gets them sick? Are you sick or something? Vape? No. Bronchitis. It's already hard enough planning a get-together with a group of five. Imagine nine people. In the end, some idols will just suck it up and power through their sickness, which is why we have videos of idols fainting on stage or needing to take a month off because their mental health is in shambles. <sighs> Being made to stay up for three nights in a row? I could never do that. You ever wake up 20 minutes before your alarm goes off and your day is pretty much ruined? Props to morning people for being annoying as hell, but still being able to function and look like a human right when they wake up. As an idol, you have to look happy and professional, even if you're about to pass away. Otherwise, your managers will yell at you. These companies don't see trainees as humans, but more so products that have the potential to make you a lot of money if they're successful. Just look at the way these managers are treating their idols during practice. Yeah. 
뭐야? 한 시간 걸어, 한시 걸어 나오는 거? 어? 이거야 이거. 어? 어? 야 제만 좀 이상하게 나오고 혼자 혼자만 낙동강 오르다 걷듯이 나오잖아 지금. 어? 반하고 반하네. 쟁이는 왜 우리 굳어 있어? 싸웠어? I'm not sure if this is the CEO, but what dance teacher dances in a polo and khakis? Isn't this a high school teacher cosplay? He's about to go teach math right after. No wonder, this industry has such a high rate of burnout. For the most part, unless you're from a well-established company with lots of money, everyone else is fighting for their lives. These new idols are working really hard to make it big, while these companies are using up all their money, hoping that their trainees can become successful and make them back a profit. Even with the contracts that they give you, what's the point in nurturing talent unless you can get them to sign away the best parts of their life just for a sliver of a chance to debut? Back in the day, the term slave contracts was thrown around a lot. It was literally the wild west with no HR departments and companies taking advantage of a rapidly growing industry. One of the most well-known instances is the slave contract signed by TVXQ in 2009, which was a 13-year-long contract. Members Jae Jung, Yoo Chung, and Jun Su attempted to split with their Korean management, SM Entertainment, claiming that their 13-year contract was excessively long. Schedules were held out without permission of the members, and profits were unfairly distributed. In October 2009, the Seoul Central District Court granted the trio a temporary contract injunction, and TVXQ's group activities in Korea were ceased. The industry has gotten a lot better after this, and contracts are less like a life sentence, and more so, an elementary school that charges you university price tuition. After building up your perfect K-pop idol from scratch, you gotta take them up for a test drive. Because of these intense years of training like you're in the Marines, the standard for live performances is extremely high. Compared to what we see here in North America without these training programs, I'm not really sure if they're doing choreography or washing windows. This dance is like 90% shoulders and 10% anger. It is a case-by-case -case basis. Not every K-pop group will be the best at singing and dancing, but how many American boy groups or girl groups can you name that can do what these idols are doing at such a young age? To reach a large audience, these groups are generally composed of four to sometimes 23 members that are all marketed differently to appeal to different types of fans. And with so many members being perfectly in sync when they perform, Sometimes, it can seem very manufactured, where people even start looking the same. I think I've seen that nose like two K-pop idols ago. Wait a second, didn't this face model come out in 2009? When I first got into K-pop, it took me at least two months to be able to tell the members from Girls' Generation apart. Assembly lines always do quality checks to see if the outside is up to standard. Does everyone fit into Korea's strict beauty standards? That's usually achieved by plastic surgery and not genetics. In South Korea, having a small face is at the core of one's beauty. That's because Asians, in particular Koreans, have smaller eyes, giving them the appearance of a more prominent face. Moreover, a small face is considered pretty because it makes you look like a child and thus younger. Koreans prefer slim, young, and youthful faces, with small facial features and pale skin. Unlike the West, curvy shapes like Kim Kardashian or Rihanna are just too much in Korean beauty standards. A pointy nose, plump lips, a V-shaped jaw, and straight eyebrows, there's an entire checklist that you're supposed to bring to your surgeon's office. I'm sorry. You're wanting to look like a Bratz doll, and if you're not up to standard, companies will pay for your plastic surgery before you debut, since it's easier to change your face before becoming well-known. Then you can claim all your facial features are natural, and that drinking water and eating healthy gave you a nose bridge. A more recent study from 2020 determined that 20% of young Korean girls have undergone cosmetic surgery, a percentage significantly higher than the average of most countries. Plastic surgery in South Korea is not just socially accepted, but even encouraged by media and celebrities. Other than having a face that fits the Korean beauty standard, being extremely thin and fit is another standard that idols are expected to meet. It's very common when you're training, since companies need to see if you can work hard to lose weight. <laughs> Mm. 
못 일어날 것 같아서 무서워서 응. 눈물이 나는 거야 갑자기 <웃음> 그치 어. 일주일 동안 아무 일안 먹었어? 어. Companies will weigh you right down to the decimal, and even if you're 0.2 pounds over the weight they want you to be, you might not get to debut or you might get in trouble. Asian people tend to carry a little bit more fat on their faces compared to other ethnicities. Hey, that's why we look like we're in our 20s, 40% of our life. It's kind of weird how the beauty standard in a lot of countries is always the opposite of how the majority of people naturally look. Dieting culture is very common when you're an idol. These K-pop idol diets even became trends that people wanted to try out. We have the IU diet. On this diet, she had an apple for breakfast, two sweet potatoes for lunch, and a protein shake for dinner. Her meals consisted of her mostly starving herself to the point where her body got used to eating less. With this diet, she lost a shocking 4 kgs in 4 days. This type of dieting can really mess you up for a long time or even life. This one right here shocked me so much. Schumann's coffee diet. During EXO's promotions of their song Growl in 2013, Schumann underwent an extreme coffee diet where he drank copious amounts of coffee and ate only one meal every alternate day. This tactic helped him reach his lowest weight point ever, a startling 53 kgs, which is about 115 pounds. That's like well below the average weight for a guy that's 5'7". If I drank that much coffee, I would need to buy a new bathroom every other month and I would have no teeth left. Schumann mentioned that people even treated him differently after losing weight, which reinforces the idea that if you're skinny, you'll have a better chance to succeed. It's not a new haircut or new clothes, it's literally replacing your insides with coffee. On a recent episode of Happy Together, Mina from Goo Goo Dawn shocked viewers by revealing that she quit eating food and survived off of two bottles of sparkling water a day, and she only weighed 92 pounds at her lightest. Well, I'm really glad that she survived that and is alive. Sparkling water has negative nutrients. The act of drinking and the bubbles fizzling in your mouth is probably making you burn calories too. Weight is one of the first things that fans will point out. They'll say things like, oh, they're not working hard enough, or they really let themselves go after they became famous. It usually happens with female idols. Liz and Kyla were victims of body shaming, which is crazy since they were still very young when it all happened. That's why these K-pop entertainment companies are so strict with how idols present themselves. They really drill it into their heads when they're trainees. The looks are super important. Well, now that we have our manufactured idols straight from the assembly line, now what? We can't get any more perfect after physically and mentally molding these kids into perfect entertainment machines. My Work here is done. What the fuck? Picture this, a K-pop idol that never ages, always does what they're told, looks perfect 24-7, never gets sick, and can perform with 100% accuracy with no mistakes. You'll never have to worry about scandals messing up your career, and you can change your clothes and your hair color with two mouse clicks. This is Sejin, a computer-generated virtual idol in a K-pop group with real human beings. Oh no, we've progressed too far with building the perfect K-pop idol, then now we're resorting to AI technology to build one from the ground up. But this is exactly what entertainment companies want, someone that can make them profits without the pesky negatives that come with being a real person. But what if you were one of these members that trained for years just to let a non-human idol overshadow you? This guy isn't even real, and they let him be in the center, which is the spot that everyone fights for since you get the most screen time and attention. They even have his members acting like he's actually there with them, when we know that they are literally talking to air right now. It's an interesting concept, a little unsettling, but Interesting. K-pop is always changing, so you have to do new things to stand out. AI-generated K-pop idols is a pretty new concept that started not too long ago. They really tried pushing this concept with Espa, who debuted in 2020, where each member has their own AI that represents them in their self-made metaverse named Kwangya. This wasn't the most successful use of AI since they looked kind of janky, aka their Roadblocks concert. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. 
You know how a new game comes out and they have to iron out all the viruses and kinks? A few patches in and I'm sure they'll look less like animatronics. But this Saijin idol is the first one I've seen that actually could pass for a human being. Look at how well he blends in. It's so unsettling, knowing one of these people is just pixels and glue. I really don't think these virtual idols can take over the job of a real human being, at least not anytime soon, maybe in like 30 to 50 years, when we all have USB cables coming out of our butts to plug into the internet. K-pop as a whole has done more good than harm. It's really cool to see Asian talent get recognized worldwide, as more people are becoming interested in the culture. But it is important to stay informed about the content you're consuming. I guess you don't have to. I mean, I was probably happy not knowing any of this. But now, I'm informed, smarter, and mentally worse. Ain't that goofy how it works? Not really, because the YouTube algorithm is busy pumping out YouTubers that want to make their silly little videos while hiding their silly little faces. Keep on being an upstanding citizen by leaving a like and a comment for engagement. I'll get to pop up on your recommended whenever I have new topics to talk about, and we'll get more funding for our K-pop support group that way. Hopefully we can get some snacks and not only have ice cubes and sparkling water to eat. Have a good day, try not to be dumb, and I'll see you in the next one.